recording. It's uh, Monday, February 14th, 2022. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Um, first order item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the January 24th, 2022 meeting. The so agenda moved. does say 2021, so, so please note that. Second. Motion by Mr. Fuller, second by Mrs. Peters. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Any special requests or continuances? None. Seeing none, we move on to findings of fact. First up is BCA 2021 037, the development standards variance for 2045 Abert Road. <clears throat> Chairman, in consideration of statutory criteria, I move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision, final action for variance petition number BZA 2021 037. Second. Motion by Mrs. Peters, second by Mr. King. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Next is uh, BZA 2021 038, the use variance for 374 North Henderson Avenue. Mr. Chairman, I, in consideration of the statutory criteria, move that we adopt the written findings of fact. As presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into record as our final decision and final action for the variance petition number BZA 2021 028. 38. 38, sorry. Second. Motion by Mr. Puller, second by Mr. Foster. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, say the sign. Motion carries five. Okay. Next, any, there is no old business. Any old business from the floor? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to new business, which is BZA 2022-002, a development standards variance from Diana Geloff for the location at 813 Oakwood Drive, requesting two variance requests in order to construct a third car addition to the existing two-car attached garage. First variance request, produce the required minimum side yard setback from 10 feet to seven and a half feet. And the second variance request is to not require the third car addition to the garage to set back two feet farther than the existing garage front wall. All those wishing to speak in attendance, please stand and uh, raise your right hand and be sworn in by our secretary. Do you swear penalties for perjury? The testimony must be construed to the best of your knowledge. I do. And is there anyone um, on the Zoom that is wishing to speak to this? Like we only have ourselves signed in. Okay, so we have no one remote. Okay. Um, so who's the petitioner? Who is the petitioner? Sir, are you the petitioner? No. no. Is there no petitioner present? No. But she indicated she probably would attend virtually. Um, if she's having trouble problems. connecting. Yep, phone number four or uh, contact. Do you by chance have her phone number on? Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. go. Hi, Diane. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm hitting like 40 buttons. I apologize. All good. <laughs> All right. So uh, I assume this is uh, Ms. Gillop? Yes, that's me. Okay, Ms. Gillop, I'm going to have you sworn in by our secretary. Um, sure. Are you, you, you're on audio only, I assume? Sure. We have no video. Okay, so. Um, no, I have video. I can see. Okay, go ahead, Stevie. Do you surrender penalties and perjury? The test directive is true to the best of your knowledge. Yes. All right. Ms. Geloff, tell us why you're here. Uh, I just want to get the variance to uh, build the third car garage. Okay. Um, and would you have the staff report? Do you have the staff report and your, um, your statement of reasons with you? I don't. I, I didn't know I had to bring all that. I was just thought I was just going to Zoom and listen to you guys debate it. So I do apologize. Okay. Um, we do need to get on the record your um, your your statement of reasons your um, for your various requests. So the first one is regarding the side yard setback from 10 feet to seven and a half feet. Um, yes. If you would, please, um, in your own words, then tell us again why the approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. Well, I mean, it's not going to affect, it. There, there's existing concrete, so I'm just wanting to put a, a cover over it. 
with some footers. Okay. I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to affect anything. Okay. Um, and then secondly, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property, including the variance will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner because? No, no, it won't be affected at all. Okay. And then number three, the strict application of the terms of the zoning ordinance will result in practical difficulties in the use of the property because? Well, because it's a third bay and then we won't have to park our car on the street and it's just a safety issue and we'll park the car in the drive in a covered uh, garage bay. Okay. And then I guess, um, Sean, is it okay if I read into the record what was written? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry to go up. I'm sorry. I apologize. I've never done this before. You're, you're fine. I'm just asking. Thank you. For, I'm asking for a clarification of procedure here by our, our attorney. Sure. It's, it's the staff report and you enter it into the record. If you want to read the portions of the staff report that you want specifically okay, entered so into the record, go ahead and say these are the parts of the staff report that we are entering into the record. Okay, so these are the parts of the staff report. But, uh, sorry, sorry, no, that, that, was, that was for me. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm, I guess Shauna, then because it's in the staff report, we don't need to, unless we just want to specifically- You usually say we admit into the record all evidence, right. including the staff report maps, testimony, those present. So yeah. it will be entered into the record. All right, and the, okay. the text that's in the staff report under each criteria is taken word for word from the petition what she, yeah. what she submitted, yes. not created by staff. So okay. it would be accurate. All right. Um, I suppose for those present that um, the statement for not being injurious to public health, safety and morals is, again, this will be um, a custom addition with siding and brickwork the Correct. materials and colors will match the custom home, the existing home, and features oh, the character with the neighborhood. Oh, absolutely. Um, for the use and value area uh, adjacent, what uh, Ms. Geloff has written is that the new structure will not block the neighbor's view. The adjacent neighbor's house is set back, so it doesn't feel as if the structure is close to the adjacent property. And the third car addition to the attached garage will add value to the property of the neighborhood in general. And then finally, the strict application resulting in practical difficulties is because the structure cannot be built correctly. Otherwise, the addition must be approximately 12 to 13 feet in width to uh, park a car and maneuver around it. And that width cannot be obtained, well, can be obtained while staying out of the seven and a half foot wide easement that runs along the east line, but not with the 10 foot setback. All right, Ms. Um, Gilloff, we're gonna do this for the second request, which is for uh, the two foot, um, requirement to be behind the front facing, the current front face. Again, yeah. from, from your perspective, the approval will not be injurious to health, safety, morals, or general welfare of the community because? Well, I mean, it'll be fine. That way I don't have to reroute any of the water. There's already a, a water line that comes underneath. So by moving it two foot back, it'll make it perfect. You know, that way everything, and it's still custom and it looks like it's always been there. Okay. And the use and area, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property, including the variance, will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner because. Um, I mean, it, I mean, it'll it won't affect anything at all. It's just moving it two feet back. It shouldn't affect anything. It shouldn't affect the view, safety. It still will be custom. Okay. Um, and it, you, in your written answer, you said it will not block the adjacent neighbor's view since the neighbor's house is set back further than the current structure. Yeah, and that is correct. Okay, and then the strict application of terms of zoning ordinance will result in pra practical difficulties in the use of the property because? Uh, just because I won't have to park the car on the street. Uh, I mean, it's a safety issue. I don't leave my kid's car on the, on the street. It comes right out from a cul-de-sac. Plus, it would just, you know, it would, you know, there's not an existing concrete structure there, so. And then again, your in your written findings, you you said that the variance uh, is for the garage and structure looks proportionally correct with the existing home versus adding the two feet um, offset and ensure the vehicle can be stored in the garage. Also, utility meters are located immediately south of the proposed addition, and moving right. it feet further back would result in require would result in requiring relocation of that equipment. That is correct. Okay. 
number four for both, the structure is not regulated under Indiana Code 8-21-10-3 for hazard air navigation. All right, Ms. Right. Geloff, anything else you want to add? No, I'm good. All right, uh, then I will turn it over to anyone else wishing to see. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on behalf of the petitioner? If not, anyone um, wishing to speak as a remonstrator? Sir, go ahead and go to step up to the podium and uh, state your name and address. Usually a pair here, so you have to guide me, folks. Up oh, right over there. Over, over there doesn't help me. <laughs> to your left. To your Kevin. left. Thank you. Yep, sorry. You get it? And then okay. if you would state your name and address for the record. My name is Kevin Kelly. Uh, I live at 801 West Oakwood Drive, which is the property immediately to the uh, east of the uh, proposed garage improvements. I have lived at that house uh, for 40 since uh, July of 1978. So uh, I see a lot of changes in the neighborhood. Um, first comment is that I really have no objection at all to the idea of a third bay garage. In fact, when the previous resident uh, put the pad on, the additional pad on, he at least did a nice sweep in um, as opposed to just bumping it on the, uh, the additional 10 foot or 12 foot uh, addition to his driveway. So it looks actually very nice and very clean. Uh, the area between our two houses, of course, is not only is it a utility um, right away, it has also served many ways as a drainage right away. And I remember way back in the late seventies, actually seeing a, um, Either it was plans or plat which show that as being a great impeachment. Here, regardless, of course, um, the land is sloped and there is um, drainage from the uh, south to the north. I have really have several concerns. One of them is construction uh, technique, one of them is structural, and the others are all drainage. If there was out of the way, easy first. Um, there used to be roughly 20 feet between my neighbor's house and the property line and that um, when the neighbor put the new driveway on, um, that reduced it to about 10 feet. Um, and uh, uh, it certainly affects the, the drainage at that point, but because it didn't have anything on it, and the, the roof pitch is towards the east also. So the gutters run from south to north and uh, um, ducked out onto the driveway. Well, the new slab, of course, took most of the water to the street or at least in that direction. Um, there is a portion of the new driveway that is, I want to say is between uh, approximately, just approximately two feet higher than the low spot between our houses. So if you add another two and a half feet on there, that closes it down to seven and a half feet and you've got roughly a three to one or four to one slope as opposed to what had been with the original house, about a 10 to one slope. So any water that drains off of that roof or before drained off the slab, which was more or less directed out towards the street, uh, would have been, uh, so it would have slopped over hit into the yard and it would keep that area wet for a long time. Um, now with it coming over another two feet, plus of course you've got the overhang of the roof. Um, you're going to have that roughly two and a, or three, three to four to one slope. Uh, so really, if there's water coming up there during a good rainstorm, there is really no retainage on um, all the retaining is going to be on the 801 West Oakwood Drive side of, uh, side of the property. So somehow the guttering on that needs to be made or directed so that it directs onto the, even though it's on the end closest to my house, somehow that guttering uh, and drain spouts need to be directed um, as opposed to, as it had been originally, directed to the east. It needs to be directed onto the slab and not directed towards 
uh, my property. Uh, so we don't add accumulation water to that. That's drainage problem number one. Drainage problem number two is uh, the property next door to me also has a swimming pool and on the side of the house or sand filters. Uh, the previous owners, no casting at all on the uh, uh, current owners, uh, would occasionally backwash that sand filter and had a hose that came out and directed it basically into that drainage way uh, and literally flooded my yard. Well, when he had, we had 20 feet between the houses, both yards got pretty wet. Now with that extra slope in there, uh, or pulling it up farther so the slope is even intensified, more of that water is going to go out uh, towards the east. Um, and that's not something I want. Uh, the easiest way to solve that is a resolution by the property owner that when they do backwash that sand filter, they will put the hose up and take it down either onto their driveway or down closer to, to the where it flattens out. Uh, so I don't have that water backing up um, and accumulating uh, in so many lake in my yard. Again, she's not done that, but uh, if they mm -hmm. did the same thing, that would happen. Um, Never done. The uh, uh, third thing is a structural. I'm not a structural engineer, but I've done enough with large, large uh, structures to know that if I'm on fill, recent fill, uh, I might want to take that footer down past that at that uh, fill material and that driveway that they have now, or at least the addition that was put on, I'm guessing that was about 10 years ago. Um, again, because that was the, the driveway or the whole uh, side yard sloped to the east, um, that was filled, uh, and I don't know how well it was compacted. Um, there was some slight cracking right near the foundation, but it seems to be holding up pretty good. But that footer going down, uh, there is already some, some erosion that I've seen over the years on that side, but again, not being a structural engineer, but having dealt with issues with uh, commercial and, and uh, uh, municipal, uh, the property owner might want to consider, and I don't know who they used, and, and I really didn't study the, what they had on that, but might want to consider taking that footer down a little deeper, um, uh, at least past the original material. So they aren't just putting it in fill that's not compacted well. So they don't get, they don't want, obviously don't want any settling. Um, another item is, which is a minor item, uh, which hopefully could be resolved, uh, is that when the previous owner did construction, he had 20 feet to deal with uh, between the house and the, and the property line. He would have, always have stuff. He was a carpenter and was always doing projects that had stuff out there and the like. There's going to be a slab there already now, plus you're going to be building a structure. Uh, I want to make sure, get some assurances that my yard is not going to be used for construction material storage. Uh, I just did the, you know, the property possibility access thing. That's not a problem, whatever. And we might be some slop from the footer. But um, uh, I just want to make sure wherever those materials are going to be stored, the lumber, uh, drywall, roofing materials, whatever, decking, that, that uh, uh, my yard is not where it is going to be stored. And that's, those are the issues that I had. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Okay. Um, anyone else, Mr. Davis? Yes. Uh, so uh, Mr. Kelly uh, touched on one of the first issues that um, staff noticed, and that is when you see the commitment in the staff report, or the uh, condition in the staff report for um, not encroaching in the seven and a half feet. That would mean the materials as presented, that building would have to shrink in a foot because the way it's written or the way it's presented to us, the dimensions on that site plan are to the wall. This building does have a one foot overhang that would then extend into the uh, setback area. And also, as uh, Mr. John is talking to us about, there's going to be a footer down there. Now, depending on how that's designed, it could encroach six inches, it could encroach a foot. You know, it's kind of what, what that loading is as to how big it's going to be, so I'm not necessarily certain. But there would be an encroachment beyond the like beyond that wall. So we need to make sure that with that commitment that we're not going in to the seven and a half feet, that actually means this garage has to get a foot narrower to, to make all that 
all that work. Now, in terms of the two foot offset, that is intended in a new construction to keep that from being just one big wall of garage, but understanding that this is an existing home and that all the utility service enters at that location, this that, that would constitute a bit of a, of a hardship in staff side. So those, those are the uh, reasons behind the staff report. But again, to be clear, the garage would have to narrow a foot. Uh, May I comment on your comments? <laughs> sure. Uh, I agree that uh, uh, it would look much better with a straight across the front and not an offset. Uh, it, it, it's just uh, what I appreciate the fact that there are three car garages in the neighborhood now. What I appreciate the fact is we don't have a, with the way that the driveway is designed and the way it would be going in there, really not adding on to the functional driveway at all, that it, as opposed to a driveway further down my street at the end, which looks like a parking lot, this will look nice, and I think she, her commitment to basically build it up with the same colorations, I mean, paint, paint the wood, whatever you want to, but uh, uh, the same brick and the same style uh, actually will make it uh, an improvement to the property from my perspective, as opposed to having uh, a bunch of trailers and things sitting out there, which is what the previous owner ended up using the lot for. So I, I have no objection from my perspective, uh, just from a style or architectural standpoint, I think it actually makes sense to have that straight across. All right, thank you. Anything else? Uh, the only other piece I would add is um, if this is approved and construction started, um, please be careful with the utility locates. I know the owner has gone through the extent of uh, pinning that edge of that seven and a half foot easement. Utilities rarely do that. So if a locate comes in close to the edge of that line, might want to hand dig a hole just to make sure your excavator's not going to hit something. Um, other than that, just a note for our petitioner to, to be careful with that because the utilities may not have been as careful. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Ms. Gelloff, or Ms. Gelloff, uh, yes. you, you got five minutes to respond to any of that if you would like. Sure. Okay. So uh, with respect to Mr. Kelly, I would never uh, leave our materials in his yard. Just want to make that, you know, on record, I would never disrespect his property line. Um, we're not living in that home right now because we're trying to, you know, get the garage going. So we, we plan on just storing all that material in the garage until it's completed. Um, with regards to the water and the drainage, I had talked to him about it, but I haven't talked to my contractor again, but the, the plan was to connect to uh, the existing underwater, there's some underwater lines that go out to the street and he was going to do that. So there wasn't a, a water issue for Kevin. Cause I know what he's saying. It is low there on his side and he does collect water. So I would do everything I can to make sure that there's no water issue whatsoever there for him. And then uh, with the draining of the pool, I've never, I always drain it down the driveway to the end of the driveway because there's a drain at the end of the driveway. And that's probably not what I'm supposed to do, but that's what I do because I didn't know what else, where else to drain it. I didn't want to put it in his yard or mine. Yep. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, and Ms. Gilloff, are you, you're familiar with the two proposed conditions in the staff report. Number one, the construction plans shall significantly conform to the architectural rendering submitted with the petition. And attaches and attaches exhibits to this report. Exterior materials and colors shall match the existing home. And oh yes, absolutely. And then number two, the garage addition shall not encroach into the seven and a half foot easement along the east lot line. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and and did you understand what Mr. Davis was saying about um, the seven and a half foot easement line and your current rendering would encroach on that? Um. I mean, does it mean I have to redo the plans or anything? Or does that mean that my footers can't go past the existing uh, concrete? Is that what he's saying? So what, what the staff report is saying is you have the wall of the garage at 13 feet, 10 inches from okay. the side of the existing structure. That puts okay. the roof 14 feet, 10 inches. So mm -hmm. we need to hold the whole structure at that 1310 because that's what gets us to the easement. So okay. the garage itself would have to shrink by a foot so that that overhang could pull out to be just in line with the easement. Okay, so we have to move it over a foot. Yes. 
We Perfect. can't put the footers to the edge of the thing. The footers have to be on the existing concrete. True. No. Well, no, it's not so much the footers, it's the overhang, it sounds like. The overhang is going to probably be the part that comes out. Oh, the overhang of the garage where the yep. gutters will be. Correct. So, there's, okay. so you're at 1411 overall right now. You're going to have to, or 1410 uh, overall right now, you're going to have to get down to 1310 overall. Okay, so I have to go back to the architect. Yes. And change that overhang of some sort. Yeah, he'll have to work with you on that to make sure you're not, that nothing, no part of that building is encroaching on that easement. Okay, I gotcha. That would require a revised drawing for the building permit application. Okay. Oh, so that means I could, does that mean I have to wait till the next meeting to get it approved? No, you just, no, not, not necessarily. You, oh. well, we, we can still take action tonight on it. Um, and if approved, then you would just simply have to submit the new drawing to the planning staff. Okay. Okay. I got you. All right. Um, anything further, Mr. Davis? All right. And I'll close the public hearing. I'm going to open it up to the board for questions. Um, Ms. Peters? Um, my question has to do with uh, what Mr. Kelly presented on the drainage issues. How is that something that? Is part of the proposed plans? Is that something we need to include in our consideration here, or how does that work? Well, um, that's something we can definitely take into account when we're doing the site plan, when we're doing the review with the building permit, making sure that that grading uh, stays to what's there or gets better. Um, I don't have those uh, site plans. You know, in front of me or the grading in front of me. So mm -hmm. that is something I have to work with our residential inspector on. Uh, that's something you would also be uh, very in tune with and not you know, uh, negatively impacting that drainage. So is that something if we proceed to uh, recommend approval that we should incorporate another condition? That uh, that could that would be appropriate if you want uh, that action taken. Um, again, it's something we would look at. I, I mean, it sounds know. like a significant issue. Yeah. And not really. There can be a commitment to the effect of, uh, you know, the, the drainage shall not be further further impacted. Uh, we can work to hold that hold that grade as uh, as tight to what is there as possible. Mr. Okay. Um, I understand the, the foot overhang because that actually does put the roof, the edge of the roof, closer to the property line. Does the footer make that much difference? It's underground. Well, that's where they're going to put the utility lines. So it, it would be, it would definitely be an issue, especially in some of these subdivisions that only have a seven and a half foot easement. It really doesn't give them. The utilities that much room to work with. Okay, makes sense. Mr. Foster? I have no questions. Mr. King? No questions. I don't either. You answered mine. There will be a site plan review um, by uh, on our behalf and look to make sure everything is right. Yeah, the, the uh, building department will check the planning staff to make sure what's submitted has met what's set, uh, set here in this meeting. Okay. Can I ask for a clarification? Sure. You suggested that if they were going to put like an additional condition on it, was it that the drainage shall not be uh, further impacted and the existing grade perpetuated? The existing grade would be perpetuated. The existing drainage patterns would be perpetuated. Existing grade and drainage patterns perpetuated. Thank you. Are all the um, notices and receipts in? Affidavits? Yes, all the notices are in order. <coughs> Excuse me, and receipts are in the file. Certified copies of the Unified Development Ordinance and the Comprehensive Plan are also in the file and in the record. I'll take a motion to adopt them all into the record. Mr. Chairman, I move that we admit all the evidence presented in regard to this matter, including the notices, receipts, maps, photographs, written documents, petitioner's application and attachments, petitioner's detailed statement of reasons, 
the staff report prepared by the planning department, certified copies of the unified development ordinance and comprehensive plan, testimony of the petitioner, city planning staff, and any remonstrators, and all other exhibits presented, be they oral or written, for consideration by this board in regard to this petition and to include the testimony to those present this evening. Second. Motion by Mr. Puller, second by Ms. Peters. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. I will take a motion on the docket itself on request number one, the, which is the first variance request being to reduce the required minimum side yard setback distance from 10 feet to 7.5 feet. Chairman, I recommend that uh, we approve the variance request and that the conditions. Uh, number one, construction plans shall significantly conform to the architectural renderings submitted with the petition and attached as exhibits to this report. Exterior materials and color shall match the existing home. Number two, the garage addition shall not encroach on the 7.5 foot easement along the east lot line to include the overhang. Uh, number three, how, how is that wording on this? that it was that the drainage shall not be further impacted and existing grade and drainage patterns perpetuated. Sounds good. <laughs> Second. I have a motion <laughs> by Peter. Sorry. Motion by Mrs. Peter, sent by Mr. Puller with the three conditions. Uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. I'll take a motion on request number two, which is to not require the third car addition to the garage to set back two feet further than the existing garage wall front. Chairman, I recommend that we approve the uh... A request with the three conditions that we just previously mentioned. Mr. Peters. Second. Second by Mr. King with the three condition. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, so uh, Ms. Geloff, uh, yeah. you can proceed. You do need to um, obviously have your architect um, be very careful that he is not um, encroaching anywhere in the building, including the overhang into that seven and a half feet and work with the planning staff to uh, make any changes as necessary. Um, but you are able to move forward. We'll take final action in a couple of weeks. Perfect. Can I, I mean, can I reach out to Gabe tomorrow if I have any other questions or do I have to reach out to somebody else? That, that will be great. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, woo. Okay, um, any new business from, oh, sorry. Motion to uh, uh, have the Corporation Council draft the financial fact. Chairman, having considered the statutory criteria, I move that we direct the Corporation Council's office to draft written findings of fact regarding our decision on the variance request presented in variance petition number BZA 2022-002, said findings to specifically incorporate the staff report and the evidence submitted into the record for consideration and adoption by the board of zoning appeals as our final decision and final action regarding this petition at our next meeting. So by Mr. Mrs. Peters, second by Mr. King, all in favor, raise your right hand, all opposed and sign, motion carries 5-0. Uh, any new business from the floor? Seeing none, any announcements? Well, we do have business for our meeting on the 28th, so we will see you again in two weeks. And I haven't, I will not be able to attend that meeting. My wife has had surgery late that afternoon. My minor surgery is fine, but I will not. It will keep me from being here. So um, I will not be in attendance on the 14th of March. I'll be, I was going to get it virtually, but that would be three o'clock where I'm going to be at that. Not going to happen. <laughs> <That's Wow. stuff. laughs> I also wanted to mention for anybody here or listening in, there's no business for planning commission tonight. That meeting is canceled. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved by Mr. King. We are adjourned. Stop the report.